I'm Jeannie from Tyrion's Landing, a podcast member of the Gunna Geek Network, just like the one you're listening to now. The opinions expressed are those of each individual. Check out all the other podcasts at GunnaGeekNetwork.com and get ready because geekiness begins in three, two, one. You have been granted clearance by director Phil Coulson. Stand by for S.H.I.E.L.D. debriefing. All information to be discussed here is classified and may only be discussed among agents granted clearance by the S.H.I.E.L.D. director. Now it's time for your scheduled debriefing. I'm Agent Stargate Pioneer. I'm Agent Haley. And I'm Agent Lauren. Welcome to Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., a Marvel Comic Universe fan show. This is show number 125. We're a century and a quarter old, discussing the Jessica Jones season one finale, a.k.a. Smile. This show is recorded on Wednesday, June 8th, 2016. Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a fan-based podcast on the ABC television show Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Marvel's Daredevil Jessica Jones, and Luke Cage on Netflix and the general Marvel comic universe. Because of the fantastic Rosario Dawson. Yeah. (laughs) If you'd like to talk to us about the fantastic Rosario Dawson, you can contact us at our website, legendsofshield.com. You can get a hold of us at our voicemail, 844-THE-BUS-1. That's 844-843-843. 2871. You can find us at our Facebook, our Twitter, and our Tumblr, all by searching Legends of Seal Legends of Shield. You can find us at our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash gunna geek. And you can find our network at uh you can find our network at gunnageek.com. This time on Legends of Shield, we're gonna be talking about our next giveaway. Stay tuned on that. It's gonna be an exciting one. We're gonna be talking about, of course, the Jessica Jones season one finale. We're gonna be talking about the weekly Marvel news, your feedback, and of course, highlights from the live chat room. Hi Adam, it's nice to see you there. So we gave away the Marvel Collector Core Crate last week. Haven't received a DM yet from Critical Tiger. Still waiting for that address to send it off. But we're going to start our next giveaway. I don't actually have it in hand at the moment, but it's coming in the mail. And it's awesome. It is going to be the Marvel's Collector Core Crate. Women of Power! And yeah, so Haley, what are people going to do to get that one? Well, we figured because this is the Women of Power crate, we had to do something with women. And we decided that what we would do is if you could gender swap any character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, who would you cast as the female version of that character? So yeah, it has to be a character who is currently a dude in the MCU. Right. A, a dude so, like, who would be the female version for Thor? Who would you cast I mean, for that? Would or Spider-Man Captain be, America? Would Spider-Man be considered a dude? Because he's, like, yes. a boy. Well, he's still, you know, a dude. Dude okay. is an ageless term. Okay. So, any well, guy... Technically, like I also Kobe. use dude as a gender-neutral term. True. So... Dude. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. That, it's... it's if you ever forget somebody's name, just call them dude, and you'll they'll mm-hmm. think you're really friendly. No, dude. That's my fact, trick. I was or bro. Cl- I was or bro. Cl- yeah, okay. I was in class today, and I swear the guy that was sitting right in front of me, and of course we did all did our name tags and put them on the desk and whatever, but they're facing forward. So the guy that was right in front of me had mentioned in his introduction that he was a comic book fan. So at a break or whatever, I thought his name was Rob. So I go, hey, Rob. Nothing. So I'm like, oh, maybe he's just hard of hearing like me and he didn't hear it. I'll wait until the noise quiets down a little bit. Hey, Rob. Nothing. I did try. Hey, dude. He didn't turn around either. So I'm not sure if he's hip or not. But he did mention that he was a comic book fan before comics were cool. So I'm going to throw a pencil at him next time. Yeah, I think I will. So we're going to get to talk to him again tomorrow and we'll see what actually pops out there. In the meantime, this is pretty cool giveaway. We're going to be doing it, I believe, what is it, July 13th, Wednesday, July 13th. So get your answer in before then. Um, 
Actually, it might be the 20th, 13th or the 20th. We'll get back to you. 20th, next, July 20th. July, July 20th, we're going to be giving it away then. And the reason why it's going to take so long, first of all, still waiting for the crate. Second of all, we're going to be taking a couple of weeks off. So get your thing, get your female gender swap character and then who you would cast as that character. Mm -hmm. So it's not just like, oh, I want to see a female Iron Man. No, who would you cast as a female Iron Man? Who would you cast as a female Thor? That's what we're talking about. So get that into us by July 20th. All right, are you guys ready to get into the main event? Ready. Let's do it. We have finally made it. Let's see. November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June. So just so shy of seven months after it came out on Netflix, we are now at the last episode of season one of Jessica Jones. And this one was a good one. And we can't wait to talk about it. it well, we covered two other TV shows and three movies since it came out, too. Well, you're getting all, like, official and everything, so knock that off. Anyway, it was entitled, a.k.a. Smile. We'll talk about the title in a little bit. It was directed by the venerable Mr. Michael Reimer, who has 21 total directing credits to his name. Jessica Jones, being this is the single Jessica Jones episode he directed. He also did nine episodes of Hannibal, two episodes of America, American Horror Story, one episode of one of Haley's favorite shows called Longmire. Two episodes of Flash Forward, which was a good series. I think it was canceled before its time. And 24 episodes of the show that brought us all together, Battlestar Galactica. He also did Queen of the Damned, which was one of my favorite movies in high school because <laughs> I was that nerd. Wasn't he one of the producers on Battlestar Galactica? It was Ronald D. Moore and Michael Reimer. Yeah, right? he was. Yeah. Um, yes, yes, he was. Well, uh, David Icke was the other oh, showrunner. Okay, 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 there you go. But he was one of their mini Michaels who was their go-to directors. Yeah, I think he might have been on a few episodes of... Um, Ronald Moore used to do a podcast where after each episode he would... You know, go bottle of scotch. Occasionally, some yeah. of the stars or people who worked on the show would come over and they would just talk about the episode. And I'm pretty sure Michael Reimer was on a few of those. So I think he was. Disappointed that he didn't do that for like the last season or two because I missed the scotch, the glass clinging. Mm -hmm. the, the, yeah, the, the ice clinking in the glass. And he always had a cigar too. It was like the one time he, he and his wife actually smoked cigars in the house, or so he said. I think it actually went on. A I think it was cigarettes. Bit. But yeah, I thought it was a cigar. Huh. Okay, go figure. I, I thought it was a cigar. The memory yeah. fades on a podcast that did not last very long. Let's put it that way. Anyway, get back to Jessica Jones here. The story was by Jamie King, who has four total titles, including two episodes of Jessica Jones. The teleplay was by Scott Reynolds with six total titles, including Iron Fist, 13 episodes of Iron Fist. So guess what we're going to see? Like, isn't that next year, like late next year, Iron Fist? I think so. I know they're they're filming it right now. Or, yeah, they are, they are because okay. they've seen uh, Finn Jones looking, you know, like a bum. Right. Five episodes of Jessica Jones, two of the following, which I actually didn't watch, but I heard a lot of people did. With... The first season was pretty good and then like by the last couple episodes i was like oh okay they did that and then i started watching the second season i was like and this is ridiculous never mind even though it had some absolutely fantastic actors including kevin bacon right yes kevin bacon james purifoy uh the dude that played uh sunspot actually in hmm? um, x-men days of future past was in the first season okay so 11 episodes of Dexter. This is back to Scott Reynolds. 11 episodes of Dexter and two episodes of E-Ring. And then the teleplay was by Melissa Rosenberg, who has 23 total writing titles under her belt, including two episodes of Jessica Jones. And get this, Twilight, The Twilight Saga New Moon, The Twilight Saga Eclipse, The Twilight Saga Breaking Dawn Part 1 and 2. So Vampire Baseball, check. 12. In all fairness, 
if you want to read a good example of why Twilight is not Melissa Rosenberg's fault, uh, Cleolinda Jones on um, cleolinda.livejournal.com or cleolinda.tumblr.com, she used to do some write-ups for Twilight and stuff like that, and she she sort of became like the Twilight person of the internet. <laughs> and Melissa Rosenberg actually made Twilight much more palatable. Like, I actually kind of wish I'd been able to see Breaking Dawn Part 2 in the theaters, if only for this one kind of awesome mid-movie plot twist. It turns out never really happened, but uh, apparently there was fangirls just screaming in outrage and panic, and I, I wish I could have seen that. Because I, I am, I, I thrive off of schadenfreude. I can't remember if I've actually seen more than the first movie, but I know my daughters have all the movies. I I did not finish out the series. I watched, I watched New Moon because my aunt was like, you like vampires, right? Let's go see it. And I'm like, well, you're paying and there's nothing to do. And it was kind of an interesting experience seeing, you know, Twilight fans in the wild. It's their thing. They're very happy with it. Uh, you know, it's not really my thing. And then I did watch Breaking Dawn Part 1 because the Rift Tracks was on sale. Oh. And I wanted to see, uh, you know, Cedric Diggory, you know, claw open and bite open Kristen Stewart's stomach to deliver a baby. And then I wanted to see the werewolf kid fall in love with that baby. This is That's Twilight. Weird. Right. <laughs> Anyway, well, anyway, it has nothing to do with Marvel. No, or Jessica Jones, which we were talking about. So Melissa Rosenberg. This is like the anti-Twilight. <laughs> teleplay by 12 episodes of Dexter, Four of Birds of Prey, a series that I sorely have not seen and probably should at this point in time. It's on, or at least it used to be. It used to be on TNT.com or TNT, whatever. Don't go, the, the website for the channel TNT. Like all 12 episodes were on there and I actually really liked it. It was a very flawed show, but it had a great cast. Yes. And good characters as well. We're talking Nia about Sarah from Nia Sarah from legend and Ferris Bueller was Dr. Harley Quinn. Right. So birds of, it's a DC property though, right? Yes, yes. Yes. It is the birds of prey. It's, you know, Huntress and black canary and all them. Right. So that, and then, Two episodes, a single female lawyer. <laughs> Allie Fighting McBeal. for her clients. Right. Allie McBeal. Single female lawyer <laughs> having lots of sex. Allie McBeal, for those of you that don't get the Futurama reference. Three episodes of Dark Skies and for Haley, I put on the last one. Three episodes of Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman. So, I used to love that show. That was your I think I've probably seen three whole episodes of Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman. <laughs> I thought you watched the whole thing. I thought it was like Little House. No, that was, you. that was me. <laughs> oh, okay. So for <laughs> Lauren, I put on Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman. So I, that... I remember my mom watching that show when I was a kid. But yeah, I did oh, not Dark watch Skies, that. Dark Skies is also a good show. And really like awesome conspiracy theory. Sadly, one that I did not see either. I think it was a late 90s time period, early 2000s. Yeah, it was, it was like mid 90s. Uh, there's only one season. We have the DVDs. That was the dark times for SP when he did not have cable or TV, really, to watch it. In any event, that is your creative team for this season finale of Jessica Jones, Michael Reimer, Jamie King, Scott Reynolds, and Melissa Rosenberg. So it starts off answering the question, which we all just watched straight through from the penultimate to the final because we wanted to see if Luke Cage was dead or not. And guess what? He's not dead yet. Not dead yet. <laughs> and it runs a smack dag into the middle of an ER with our favorite night nurse, Claire. Yes. Yeah, I, I was so happy when she showed up here. I was like, finally! My and yeah. having her there made me regret all the more that we didn't have more of her this season. I know, I know, I know. So this episode is my iconic memory of Claire. So it's either the syringe going through the eye. And yes, we're going to do a little <laughs> bit more eye talk a little bit. Or just afterwards where she's got her glass that she got for Luke after, you know, he tricked her, said, oh, I need some water. And she's just in the kitchen. 
drinking a glass of water. And for those listening on the podcast, I actually did what she did, which was just drink a glass of water. So there you go. Acting. Thank you. Acting. 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 Yeah, but I mean, it's just like gets the water for him and he doesn't need it. So she's like, eh, might as well use it. And I was wondering for a nurse, she didn't have any qualms about the sanitariness of that glass in the midst of all of whatever was going on in Jessica's apartment over the course of the last few days. That kind of creeped me out a little bit, but that's the I joy mean, of hope. So there's this great joke that Chris Hardwick does in his most recent stand-up thing that was on TV, Fun Comfortable, talking about nurses. If you ever meet a nurse, first question you ask, what's the weirdest thing you found up somebody's butt? They will answer immediately, and they will answer calmly. I'm scared. I, I knew a doctor who found a ketchup bottle up someone's butt, oh. so... He swore it was an accident. He's like, okay, I was climbing up the, I was climbing up, I was trying to climb out the window because I was having an affair with this woman and we heard her husband coming home. So I was trying to climb up the window and I fell and I fell on the ketchup bottle. He's just like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Why does it have a condom on it then? <laughs> <laughs> because all the condiments are safe in the house that you never know when you're going to be using them in sex play. So yeah, so, you know, too. public safety announcement if you're you know there's no shame in butt play just use something with a flange so it can't get sucked up your butt because then you will have to go to the doctor and then you will have things like my mom getting drunk at disney world and going up to me and being like guess which of your teachers had to have a vegetable removed from her i'm not going to tell you but guess <laughs> If you're listening teachers. to this mom, yes, I remember that. Uh, okay, so Lauren, as yes. the resident biologist on this podcast, let's talk about the medical treatment of Luke Cage. Okay, so this is actually, I, I squealed when I saw this first because this is actually kind of a, a nod to the comics. There was uh, an issue kind of fairly recently, like within the past five years or so, where he had a heart attack and yeah, they couldn't, you know, cut open to try to save him. So everyone's like, oh my God, is Luke Cage going to die? And you know, he's fine. He's fine. So here, yeah, you know, they can't break through the skin. They can't break through the skin. So this is a thing when your brain starts swelling mm -hmm. and you start having seizures. I had a concussion a couple of years ago and that's one of the things, the reasons that I had to go to the hospital because, you know, head trauma, bad thing. That's how Liam Neeson's wife died. And so, yes, draining through the eye cat. Okay, this is how people used to do uh, lobotomies back in the day. The transorbital lobotomies, what it literally was, and I'm sorry, this is going to get gross. What it literally was is uh, sticking an ice pick, an actual ice pick, because this doctor was messed up through the very, very thin bone in the back of your eye to your brain uh, and the way that uh she's doing it there is just to you know drain off some of the fluid but if you were going to you know give somebody an, a lobotomy you just stick it through there to the frontal lobe and just kind of jiggle which i do not recommend please don't do that okay so i either need cyclops's goggles or cisco's goggles or goggles that cisco can make for me to make sure that no needle comes near my eye oh it's it's generally to be avoided it happened to me once but it wasn't really well, needle was you, can, you can probably see them coming you could just not hang out with people that try and put needles in your eyes yeah lauren <laughs> it, it was a tree okay it was a wire christmas tree and it was an accident and i still have the scar Oh, gross. I was nine. Okay, if you happen to have laser eye surgery, we won't go through the gross parts of it, but when you're sit, sitting there and you are you literally have to watch this laser come at you, I can't imagine watching a needle coming at you because I knew the laser wasn't going to actually cut me. It was just going to blaze some stuff. A needle, it's going in. Ew. Ew. But yeah, and on the upside, it's not actually going in the eye. It's just going to the side of still, the, I mean, it's still not pleasant, oh, but yeah, it's God. it is a fully possible, uh, it is a fully possible uh, and plausible 
way to treat that injury. I, I wouldn't recommend it. I'm so grossed out. But considering that uh, that is one of the ways that they have to treat, you know, uh, brain swelling is to drain off yes. the excess fluid. Usually it's, you know, through a spinal tap or in like the back of the head or something. And I guess meningitis is very similar. And it's a, it's actually kind of a big deal with college students from time to time. Yes, it is. Yeah. Because dorms are disgusting. Yes. Very much so. So watch out. If you're in college and you're listening to this, watch out for your dorm room. Get your damn shots. Yes. Do that. Yeah. Don't share cups. Always wear your shower shoes. Oh, yeah. Oh, I have more. Don't sit on the don't. couch. You don't want to know what people have been doing on the couch. <laughs> or maybe There will a be a role. bathtub in the bathroom on your <laughs> floor. Do it. not use it. There was don't no use bathtub in my where I went there to was school. ours my dorm it had four shower stalls and one bathtub and I was like who would ever ever use that why did it have black don't moldy stuff on it I avoided it like the plague oh, I don't know yeah. oh, that is so gross Ugh. I thought about keeping it in there <laughs> okay you could you could just make some like bathtub gin or something in it <laughs> i mean i i wouldn't want to drink from it though the alcohol will kill anything though Th that's Hopefully. your story and you're sticking to it no okay let's i get... mean <laughs> you mean what speaking of alcohol jessica jones yeah right so let's, let's her apartment off. looks a lot like a dorm that's right, true exactly so let's just get back to luke cage kudos to claire for not freaking out kudos for her for trying non-invasive techniques and just trying to get the job done to save well i Lawrence, mean minimally invasive you yeah, know right. needle through the interior you know part of your eye socket is still kind of invasive yeah where's the adam when you needed him i bet you he would have been very useful during this he, he would have right Oh, did I? Just I don't know. The intracranial pressure might have still squished him. Ant Man. It would have to be Ant Man with this, right? Again, intracranial pressure squish. Right, but I mean, he could have, like. Well, I guess technically, no. The pressure's on the brain, not actually pressure. Pressure. So yeah, he could have still been useful. He could, yeah, he could have brought in a small little tube to drain off the extra fluid, right? In through the nasal cavity or something. Actually, yes. No. See, if you that's another thing you could do. You can go in through like the uh, the sinuses in the back of the nose, which, by the way, connect to your eye, which is why when you get headaches, this whole area here hurts. And if you was to run up there and poke a hole in the back, it would all drain out through the nose. I was really worried once that I was having like a cerebrospinal fluid leak through my nose. Turns out I think I just popped like a maxillary cyst or something. Ew. But yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So Luke Cage is saved and Kilgrave is on the prowl and getting even more amped up. Man, that guy just decided not to stop for nothing. He was he was all in and he was going to get his way. Uh, he the stuff that he did to his father, to the other boys, the dudes that were in the apartment or loft or whatever you want to call it. I mean, that was that. Oh, ugh, not good at all. Awful. I mean, the worst part I feel like was when Jessica goes and she's like, oh, man, poor guy. And she pokes him and he's still alive and his arms are off. That was gross. The fact that Albert was still alive without any arms and with all with all that blood loss on, on the floor. This is definitely a made for Netflix. While series. like what the, the remainder of one of his arms is being blendered. I know I have to erase <laughs> dad from the face of the earth and then we have to kill ourselves i mean oh yeah. kill grave just just and everything he did in the hospital as well with like the security guard trying to shoot her and the patients and everybody looking for her that was just nasty. that was like straight out of a horror movie it was and for some reason it reminded me of walking dead probably because they've been in the hospitals and walking dead before i don't know now that you mention it there was that sort of like general atmosphere like and, and, and plus there's the fact that they were they're not mindless but they're not really all under their own control mm -hmm. so it they're not zombies exactly but it's that same sort of you know mindless not gonna stop exactly sort of like that old lady in bed that's like on life support or whatever she sees jessica she sees the announcement on the tv and then tries to get out of bed to go get i mean whoa 
that that's yeah. some strong willed mind control right there. It made me want to rewatch like the 1970 whatever invasion of the body snatchers. Really? The one with uh, Donald Sutherland. Yep. Maybe I'll have to dig that up someday. Yes, you will. It's quite good. So Haley. Yeah. You get to the tandem of Trish and Jessica and how they try to beat Kilgrave throughout this episode. They're finally getting smart. They're finally discovering that Trish is going to get controlled. They are discovering that Jessica is not able to control, but they don't know because Albert is... He's souped up his powers. Right. So I, I don't know. What do you think? Could they have done anything better than that, what they did? Uh, what they did seemed to work out pretty well. So well, in the end, I think it was a good plan. Okay. So you thought the plan was good going in? Yes. It was a good plan up until the uh, headphones got knocked off. <laughs> yeah, but it seemed like they were planning for that. Like th th It's going to happen at some point in time. Did you? I mean, that, that's what the one thing that was through my mind. It's like at some point the headphones are going to get knocked off. Either you're going to be running around, or somebody's going to knock them off your head. Well, yes, because you know plot demands it. But I think they had hoped that they would stay in, but they had contingency plans in case they didn't. It's just hope, hope and love. That's what they had going for them. Huh? All right. So Malcolm and Night Nurse, they have that endearing conversation back and forth. Do you think they're sidekicks? Do you, Haley, do you think they're sidekicks? They're supporting cast, though I would watch Night Nurse. Like if they gave her her own Netflix show, I would watch that. Or her and her pals, because there's more than just Claire, right? I mean, there's several Night Nurses in the comics, right? Yeah, yeah. There's what, like four, or five? Yeah, yeah so there's a bunch all of them. together. That's fine. It'd be that'd be a fun series to watch. Either in separate hospitals or all together in one. Like a rapid response superhero medical team. Oh, that would be so watch cool. the hell out of that. And like they're like own... ER, but with superheroes. And like with their own like Ghostbusters vehicle going around. No, I, I'll tell you what I want to watch. So one of my guilty pleasures is true stories. Of, it's not even guilty pleasure. I love it. It's true stories of the ER. Oh, yeah. You know, with the like the really before. over the top reenactments and stuff. I want them to do that. Like it, just exactly the same format. Just have you know the doctors talking about the cases, and have the really terrible reenactments. But it's all superhero stuff. <laughs> so you have like the really terrible reenactments of superheroes. So that way you don't have to have too big of a budget. Isn't that kind of like I would watch the hell out of that, <laughs> right? Marvel, why aren't you hiring me? Isn't that kind of like the Powerless <laughs> show that's going to come on this fall? Well, they're doing like just office management stuff. This is this is the ER. Okay. And this is reenactment. And it's true stories of Marvel's ER. Would Ming not come back as a doctor? Oh Alex Kingston. <laughs> yes. 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 Please. Oh my god, if they could get like the actual cast from ER to do true stories of Marvel's ER. See? Oh my god. <sighs> I think I, I think we got a winner here. Funny or die or something. A NBC, Marvel, that? you got to team up on this one. I know you're an ABC property, but you got to team up on this one. Make it happen, and it would be awesome. And would it be Agent May or would it be her Doctor character? No, it would be her Doctor character. But then in another sketch, she would show up as Agent May. Oh, that'd be so cool. And then maybe her. <laughs> or it would be Chloe her? Bennett playing Agent May. Oh yeah, that'd be kind of fun. Yes. Too. I think we got a winner here. We'll we'll go uh. with that. All right. So Haley, mm -hmm. the cop, the cops being controlled at the end in the final battle. They're they're in the whatever bus station, uh, whatever terminal that was. I don't even know some sort of wharf terminal or whatever. And all the cops, how many bullets did they expend? And they didn't hit anything. What's up with that? Stormtrooper aim, <laughs> mind control <laughs> aim. Maybe he said. You know what? Here's the thing. He wasn't specific enough. He said they had to fire. He didn't say they had to hit her, so they weren't trying. Nice. I did love their Starsky and Hutch stances, though. They're taking <laughs> lessons from uh, Quentin Lance over on Arrow. I don't know. 
Uh, so do we want to talk a little bit more about the final battle here? Because that was kind of epic. I, it, was it anticlimactic to you, but it, or was it enough battle? Because you had the mind control suspense going. I thought it was enough. I know a lot of people thought that it was kind of anticlimactic, but just emotionally for me, I thought it felt right. Yeah. I mean, there, you can't have a knockdown drag out fight between Kilgrave and Jessica because if it's a fist fight, of course she's going to destroy him. And you already had the fight between her and Luke Cage last episode. So this it, to do that same kind of fight again would be repetitive. So they did something else for this final battle. Hmm. Well, the episode's name comes out at the end of the fight. And Jessica said, smile. The whole time, I remember watching this the first time, going through all 13 episodes. It was really a grinder for me going through this. We've already talked about that over and over. But when it gets to the mm -hmm. end, I, I honestly, I did not know if she was being controlled or not, or if she tried to like put cotton in her ears so she wouldn't hear or something like that. I didn't know where she stood until she got right up to him. And he, he what did he say? Tell me how much you love me. And she just says, well, no, she looks at Trish and says, I love you. Oh. And then she picks him up by the throat and turns him purple and then snaps his neck. Wahaha. It's a smile and then snaps his neck. He turns purple three times in this episode. Oh. Uh, when what, when his dad injects him, he turns purple. Like yeah, it starts to like, come up his neck and stuff. And then when he shouts stop, his he gets real purple in the face. And when she's choking the crap out of him, he turns purple. Hmm. And sadly, we cannot use David Tennant anymore in the Marvel Universe. <laughs> Aww. At least Says who? as a human. He could be a CGI flashbacks. character. Yeah. That's true. You could use his voice. He yeah. could go back to the new prison in Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and take over where uh, <laughs> Nathan Fillion left off. Yeah. Could be kind of fun. Or yeah, the maybe remainders he could of the just film. be flying around there with the Milano right next to the TARDIS, maybe. I don't know. Do you think we can cross those streams? We could. Okay. All right, so I have just a few notes left. The the files were actually sent to Trish, obviously setting up either setting season two or uh, maybe something in, in one of the other shows or The Defenders uh, on Netflix. I think season two. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Because it's too Jessica-centric to use anywhere else, I think. Right. And then Malcolm just wants to help people. I mean, he says that in the conversation with Claire. He also basically comes out at the end and... When Jessica is just exhausted at the end, he, he, he picks up the phone and that's how they start. And I remember the first time I was watching this, that the phone messages that were coming in that Jessica was just deleting. At first, I was like, well, I, these people need help. But then on, on listening to them again, these were people that needed help that she didn't help. Yeah. Well, well yeah, but they weren't. They didn't need superhero help. They needed just normal help. Help, help. You're right. And I don't know if, if it was that or if it was the fact that um, she was just exhausted or whatever. But then Malcolm comes in and it's like, how can we help? And he's going to be her screener. And I don't know. In the comics, does when she has a detective agency, does she have an assistant? um sort of there's a guy that she helps out that um actually let me pull it up real quick hold on it's i have it right over here by my computer there okay. is somebody who helps her out that she's like oh i'm not gonna pay you and he's like i'm just gonna help right and that well was the other i will say right before that we get jerry defending her and i couldn't help but think that jerry and reyes are perfect adversaries for each other because they're both despicable Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're talking about the DA that was brought forward in Daredevil, but was mm -hmm. also used in this series at the end as well. And uh, Samantha Reyes. And we mm -hmm. see what a piece of work she is in Daredevil. Oh, it was it's just nasty. And she comes back. I kind of hoped for more interaction between these series and maybe we will start to get that with Luke Cage as we go forward in the other series. But uh, Well, I, I think what it is is they don't want to have him interact too much because then it makes the Defenders less special. Right. 
Although yeah. after the big Avengers crossover, the MCU just opened wide open. But before the first Avengers, everybody was in their own movies too. And that's kind of where mm -hmm. we are with the Netflix series right now. We're pre team up, pre Avengers. You're absolutely right there. So hey, hey, did you have anything else on the episode that we haven't covered yet? Um, I, know I don't think I had any more major like, points besides quotes. Right. I have got some quotes too, but I'm pretty sure you've got the ones I wrote down. As we wait for Lauren. Uh, I think it was in the previous. Okay. Um, well, Haley, why don't you trade. go and, and start quotes and we'll see if Lauren okay. can catch up. Uh, fair warning. Most of this is clear. <laughs> this is a good man. And you, I'm an a-hole. We're not taking him to my place. Been there, done that, lost my lease. Lost my lease. So c confirmation that she had to move again. Take off your pants. I usually like a little more romancing. Don't we all? Classic, okay, there works. is a Malcolm. Yeah. But he looks like... Oh, glasses, kind of like a geek. Yeah, yeah. glasses and a yeah. white dude. And he was not a meth addict, if I remember. I do like this version of Malcolm. Oh, yeah. If I remember, he might be the one who's posing as... Uh, um, no, I guess not. Well, I do like this version of Malcolm. It, it worked well within the series. It worked well with a, a modern New York. It, it, it just it worked. I, I'm happy with the character. You know, we went through Malcolm ups and downs throughout this entire series, and where he ended up is in a good place. So that's great. Mm -hmm. What she got next, Haley? I have a friend like you and Luke, bleeding and unconscious <laughs> more often than not. <laughs> yeah, all these references to Daredevil, and we don't see him. <laughs> Always a sodding hero, aren't you? No. Yeah, not hero. Smile. Crunch. <laughs> oh, I know. Which, by the way, I, I do like that uh, that's what ends him since, you know, so often women are like, oh, you should smile more. You'd be so much prettier if you smiled. And, you know, that's kind of her last, you know, F you right? to him. Yep. Well, you and ladies... FYI, that finishes this notebook. It is completely full. <laughs> On to a new nice. one for Daredevil, so can't wait. Don't lose it, by the way, in your transition. Okay. So you ladies really like this series, right? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. So in comparison between Daredevil and Jessica Jones, which, I mean, they're both good series, don't get me wrong, but which one did you like better? Which one would you place as number one and number two? I like Jessica Jones better. Hmm. Personally, I like Jessica Jones better. I feel like Daredevil is easier to watch over again just because mm -hmm. Jessica Jones is so heavy. But because of what the character means to me and because I like the characters in it so much, it's it ranks slightly higher for me. Daredevil does? But I can understand why it wouldn't for other people. Jessica Dare Jones. Jessica Jones, yeah. Yeah, it was just very difficult for me to get through. Uh, don't get me wrong. Amazing dealt with very complex, heady issues and did it well and did it within the confines of the Marvel Universe, took the Marvel Universe to places that it just hadn't been yet. So I applaud it. It was I'm glad I watched it. Probably I discussed this before. Probably won't watch it again. Daredevil is is better for me for a lot of reasons, but that's not to diminish Jessica Jones at all was was a good series and i can't wait to see what else marvel has in store for us with the other netflix series because they are going places where they can't go either on tv or in the mcu all right you guys ready to move on to some news and feedback let's do it all right All right, kind of the light news week, which is great because, you know, summer vacations have started. We're kind of in the middle of uh, summer con season and everything, just trying to survive really as we go through our weekly schedule. But there was a couple of stories that popped out and one was actually talking about a convention, right, Lauren? Yes. Um... Hold on. I'm 
Just, no problem. Chris Evans. My brain skipped. Yeah, it's no problem. Chris Evans had a oh, little yeah, yeah. incident, supposedly, but maybe yeah. it was, wasn't? So uh, at Wizard World, what was it? Philadelphia? I yeah, think this so. Weekend? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Anthony Mackie, Chris Evans, Sebastian Stan, they were all there this weekend. I think Haley Atwell made it out for like one day. And there started people started you know to circulate this rumor on twitter that uh, a fan had um you know tried to kiss chris evans during a photo shoot and he had had a panic attack and at first it was a girl who tried to kiss him and he had been pretty much unavailable for 40 minutes and Haley atwell had to calm him down then it was a man that tried to kiss him and sebastian stan had to calm him down and then on uh, what day was this that this tweet came out? On June 6th. Monday. Monday. Chris Evans was like, on Twitter, where did these stories from Wizard World start? Definitely not true. There was no kissing, no panic, all news to me. The weekend was great. Wait a minute. So, no kissing, but the weekend was great? Chris, you and I, we got to have a talk. So, speaking of you know, kissing and great stuff at that con. There's a bunch of really good pictures that came out of that con, including uh, Sebastian Stan and Chris Evans looking on approvingly as people cosplaying as Stephen Bucky kissed. Um, Sebastian Stan, there's a video of uh, somebody, uh, there's a girl cosplaying as Winter Soldier going into the cryo chamber, you know, being led around in the cryo chamber. And he was like, oh my God. And then he got in the teeny little cryo chamber because she's a teeny little girl. And then he busted out of it and everyone was like, woo. <laughs> and it, it's a really funny video. And apparently uh, Sebastian Stan and Anthony Mackie had to be seated on different sides of the aisle because they kept trying to silly string each other. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Those, those three together must be an absolute hoot between Anthony Mackie, Chris Evans, and Sebastian Stan. And Sebastian is much more cut up than I ever thought he was. He's definitely enjoying his part in the MCU. It's glad. Yeah, there's, if you go on Tumblr and look up Wizard World and you can find, uh, you know, GIFs and pictures from the panel, people transcribing bits of the panel, videos from the panels. And yeah, they're all really hilarious. So go check that out. Haley, I heard that yes. you, you do not approve of Sharon and captain's kiss what's up with that well i don't but i don't believe i'm the haley that this article is referring to well really <laughs> there there is another haley that is connected to the marvel universe you might not have heard of her haley atwell oh uh, but she did not approve of cap sharon <laughs> and and why was that it was, was there a little age difference was there a little it's, family well there's that but it's just kind of weird because he had a very serious relationship with Peggy. And then after finding out that they're related is when kisses Sharon. There's not like a brief pause or something where he's like, oh, this, this might be kind of weird or anything. Yeah, he goes for it right then. That that was a little weird. But at the same time, let, Lauren, let's talk about the age difference in the comics and how that all came about, because it's it's not as bad in the comics, right? Okay, originally in the comics, since he was thought out in like what the sixties, sixties. So it's it's, it's like not years. that much. Yes, yeah. it's, it's not that much of an age difference. And then, as the years march on and the characters don't age, but the stories keep getting rebooted, then after being you know Peggy's niece, now she's Peggy's grandniece. Well, I think it so, was her sister to start with. Oh, I didn't actually know that. Yep. Yeah, it was. And sister. he like he didn't seriously date Peggy either originally it was just the, like this woman that he had a connection with and then they were separated in the war and then he got frozen and then he met her years later and then met the time her difference sister was not as as profound when this right. first mm -hmm. story came out it was like 20 years versus 70 i mean that's it's a significant so, it affects the story yeah yeah i i started you know reading captain america a lot more with the brew baker run which started in the I guess it would be late 2000s, mm -hmm. like 2008-ish, maybe. And that has the whole, you know, it starts off with Peggy's funeral and mm -hmm. all that. So, 
and she's his grand she's Peggy's grandniece there. So we'll so, see. I, I'm hoping to see Haley at well, we've talked about this before back in the end. And there's also the fact that apparently in the article she's like, I'd also want the best for her. And apparently <laughs> he's now a Hydra agent. Which so by the way, at Wizard World, somebody asked Chris Evans to sign their picture Hail Hydra, and he's like, Hell no. Woohoo. So good on you, Chris Evans. I love the gif with him. Never th- cap. And they've they've changed it, but we're from Age of Ultron when he is Chris Evans as, as Captain America is ripping that log apart at the farmhouse. They changed and somebody changed it to yeah the Captain America <laughs> it, comic issue of him issue one rip, yeah. ripping it apart. Which if I owned I, one, I would do, but I do not. I own will one. admit that some of those memes that have come out of it have been kind of funny. Like I saw one the other day, and this is really funny because I live in Texas and King of the Hill is on every morning when I wake up. It's mm-hmm. uh, Hank Hill drawn over cap, and it says, I hate propane. And I about died I'll laughing tell you when what. I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I watched maybe a, a season and a half of that, and I still get that joke. <laughs> That's funny. All right, Haley, there is another mm-hmm. story that we have to talk about, and I am turning this over to you because you have brought this up over and over and over again it's one of your favorite characters that you've wanted to bring into the marvel universe it was owned by another property and guess what things are looking up about bringing it in right the character he's talking about is namor the submariner who is not one of my favorite characters because i think he's kind of a tool i like him (laughs) See, why are you getting me and Haley confused? Well, Haley's the one who keeps bringing Namor up. That's... I don't think I do. I think that was me. Oh, oh well, okay, Lauren, <laughs> you take this. Because other one, it was all like imperious sex. Right. To be fair, I have read mostly sixty stories from Namor, which are terrible. Okay. I might like him more later. Yeah, he's he's a lot of fun when he's hanging out with the X Men later on. He's he's still a douche. But he's a, he's a lot of fun. Yeah, I've just seen him. I've just seen him kidnap Sue Storm a lot. That's mostly what I know of him. Yeah, Your I mean, favorite, that's still fantastic. Happens, but... Okay. Um, so these anyway. things happen. Let's talk. Has this been confirmed? Because the last day I saw it was not absolutely confirmed. It's right? okay. Well, Joe Casada stopped by Kevin Smith's Fat Man on Batman podcast, which is supposed to be more about Batman, but it's sort of just become creative people come talk about comic stuff. Mostly DC, not always. And he's, okay, well, it says he's officially stated that Namor is at Marvel again. He said, I can't speak for studios. As far as I know, yeah, we do. It's not at Fox. It's not at Sony. Yeah. So the ownership's not fully settled, but it's almost 100% back at Marvel. And Wasn't remember when we were Universal talking. Universal at some point? At some point, like, I think there was that infographic that was floating around like a couple of years ago that had Namor out in a little bubble on zone where everyone was like, where the hell is he at? Yeah, I remember And that. if he's back at Marvel, I mean, I'm okay with that. Right. <laughs> Just have him show up in a movie, you know, shirtless and man panties, <laughs> you know, shirtless and glistening. I'm okay with that. Sure. Why not? So Yes, he was the with little, Universal Pictures. Little feet wings. Yes, yes, he was what? I am looking at the infographic now. He was with Universal Pictures, and Man-Thing was off in his own bubble with Lionsgate. That's right. But they've gotten that back, I believe. So what does this mean? If they bring him back, what can they open the story up to? Well, it's it's kind of odd because most of the characters he interacts with are owned by Fox right now Mm -hmm. because he has a lot of interaction with the Fantastic Four and a lot with Mutants and X-Men. If they wanted to do like a period piece or something, or just like some yeah, shorts or something, that. they could do the um, what's it called? Starts with a D. It's not the Defenders. Uh, it is the Defenders. Oh, uh, there was also the Invaders. Invaders, the Invaders with um, it's, Captain it's, America, the original Human Torch. Yeah, the original Human Torch. Uh, Namor, and every now and then they'll throw Bucky in there. In mm. your world, Lauren, Invaders totally starts with a D pointing that out it, i i got that the invaders. The invaders but yeah that that would be them fighting nazis a lot probably there, there's a d in there i tell you what <laughs> i'm sorry for Boy, that I tell you what. that's okay it's better than i would have done yeah it starts with a z i think i don't know so that's pretty cool so yeah it'd be well, good it, it was a dick joke it, it was well, a dick he was joke. in the defenders too though i think right i don't know Ooh. 
so they could bring him in Netflix. No, 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 not that Defenders. The comic no, Defenders it's, it's was a, a completely a different, different team. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, yep. we'll see what they do with them if they do have them back, and if they do, now I have to cool. Google it. <laughs> Especially with DC with Aquaman. Oh, they could also out. do the Illuminati, but then they don't have. We don't have Reed Richards or Professor X. Yeah, no. the Defenders had Doctor Strange, Hulk, Namor, and Silver Surfer. I don't think yeah. there's any chance of any of the mutants coming over into crossing over to the MCU. It's just too lucrative of a property for Fox, and we have to look up the. Um, the, the box office for Apocalypse to see how well that's been doing. But I think Pretty well. the Fantastic Four, I think they're, they should be negotiating at this point in time. Whether or not they pull the trigger on it, who knows. But if I am Fox and if I am uh, Marvel or MCU or Disney or whoever, I would at least open up the door to negotiations on bringing the Fantastic Four back in at this point in time for a lot of different reasons. No idea if it'll happen or not. Uh, I think we've heard new stories of exploration talks up to now. Uh, so I haven't heard anything since then. We'll see. All right, Lauren. Yes. Our pal, our listener, our Patreon, Andy, did send us an email on episode 13, did he not? Yes, he did. He's been sending us emails for every Jessica Jones episode, and we've been reading, you know, selections from them. So for episode 13, uh, Rosario Dawson in the hospital. Wasn't Matt Murdock also slated to make a cameo in Jessica Jones? That's what we all thought, and I still feel cheated. <laughs> but at least we got Rosario Dawson. We did. We got something. Okay. Uh, how sweet is their sidekick talk? I agree. They're adorable. <laughs> Does that make us sidekicks? No. Them showing only her legs entering the empty building with the song with the song playing. I hope we see her with some badass earphones. And then, yeah, that was and Trish cool. under. That was an awesome entrance. And then Trish under the hoodie. They surprised him with that. That was a really good, like, oh my god, moment. The first time I saw it, I could see her, uh, Trish, uh, of just walking in with her head down, with the headphones on, with her hands. Out and palms out on the side and, and just be having some badass power that she's just going to rock the world. That would have been so cool. It was so weird to see Jessica smile, though Kilgrave not noticing her shifting her focus to Trish while saying I love you was his undoing. Yeah, that's the whole thing is that he's so like self-absorbed and so, you know, this is his moment of triumph. It's all about him and he doesn't notice that there's anything wrong. And yes, that it was perfect for me. For Andy, the showdown felt a bit anticlimactic. Still good, but nothing surprising. Bottom line, seven out of 10 deceptive smiles. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Andy. We've loved all your emails. We've loved all your rankings. And thank you for sending the emails. And uh, to be honest, we're kind of expecting some Daredevil season two emails coming up. We'll start that next week. Right, do you guys have any more feedback that we haven't included this week? Anything that you've run into? Nope. nope. All right, nope. let's walk this one out. Haley, what are we discussing next week? Next week, we're going to be starting season two of Daredevil. We'll be discussing the first episode, Bang. <laughs> Hey, just a little reminder, you can find all our streams at www.geeks.live. That's generally 9 p.m. on Wednesdays. And then our next show live after this on Geeks.live will be the Starling Tribune tomorrow night at 9 p.m. They will be discussing, they meaning me because I'm part of the crew over there too, will be discussing Legends of Tomorrow, Episode 2, and that would be Pilot part two they got so catchy titles for the first two episodes it's amazing <laughs> i just the creative minds that go into that it's it's great hey as a reminder you can catch our show legends of shield through our website legendsofshield.com don't forget our voicemail line 844 the bus one or 844-843-2871 we have a facebook page twitter page a tumblr page and you can catch all those at legends of shield you can catch all of our current videos that we're able to produce on the Gonna Geek YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Gonna Geek. And don't forget our forums on the Gonna Geek Network. And you can also catch it on the Tap a Talk app. Yep, Tap That Talk. 
Thank you very much to everybody that dropped by uh, on our live blab chat. We really appreciate it. And uh, we have come back to blab because we had some data cap issues that we have to work through. So we're hoping to be Thanks, back Canada. on our <laughs> wonderful YouTube live stream. Coming Lame up Canada. To, yes. And then... I, I need to tease something at this point in time because we, we like to tease, but uh, we are part, and, and we'll run the, the promo again in the post here, but we are part of a wonderful podcast partner program with Comic Palooza, which is starting to pay off, right, Lauren? Yes, it is. Comic Palooza is uh, only, what, about a week and a half away, and we're starting to really be gearing up towards it. And it's not only the posts and everything that we're doing. Uh, we're, we have interviews this year. We're going to have one dropping at some point. It's an interview with an author who uh, has written some media tie-ins and including a Star Wars novel, which we talk a little bit about and uh, talk a little bit about convention culture. We are going to have one later on this week with uh, a scientist at NASA who works with the ISS program. And we might have a few more coming up. And we will also be uh, recording panels at Comic Palooza. So, yay. Really Lots looking... of fun stuff coming up yep. for you. And then we still have that Chloe Bennett uh, C2E2 panel information to get out as well. But don't forget, Haley will... Um, or at Lauren will be at Comic Palooza in addition to several other Guinea Geek Network members will be there as well. Friends of the family, I believe Eric is trying to get there from Art House Legends as well. So it's a yeah. big, big convention. Eric should be here. Friends of the family actually has two panels. Two. Um, on Friday and Saturday night, we're going to be talking uh, audio plays as, you know, just the basics of doing an audio play, uh, the challenges that we face, writing audio plays, that sort of thing. And I'm going to be, I think, on Saturday, and I'll have to double check the time, on the uh, podcasting panel, like the official Conclusive podcast. That is exciting. I, I'm really looking forward to any sort of audio that I could get my hands on from that. That is going to be cool. Yeah. Other these. other podcasts on the panel include uh, people from like the Metal Geeks podcast, yeah. Ming Chen from Comic Book Men. Uh, yeah, it's 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 going to be it's going to be an event. It's great when you get a mixture of hobby podcasters and like, quote unquote, professional podcasters, two very different ways to do it. We are hobby podcasters here on the Guinea Geek Network, but you can do it professionally as well. It's a wonderful space. You can go back and forth between the two. And if you can make money at it, that's great. We we don't we don't make anything. We just love doing it. But so that is cool. All right. So thank you very much for st staying tuned there we might get an interview or two out in between main podcasts in the next couple of weeks so stay tuned for that mm -hmm. and thank you for everyone who joins us who listens on twitter who joins us for the live tweets which again for daredevil i will be live tweeting on mondays at uh, well i guess no tuesdays, tuesdays yep. on tuesdays since we don't have an episode of agents of shield right now tuesdays at 8 p.m central 9 p.m eastern time Mm -hmm. So thank you for everyone who joins in for those or who sends us news because we love it. And Lauren, you might want to think of a couple of fun off the book live tweets to do on June 28th and July 5th as well. So I can definitely do that. All right. X-Men cartoons. I was thinking about it. <laughs> um, also, thank you to everybody that sends us any kind of feedback, but especially those that send in things for our little contests we do because... They entertain us and we like to be entertained. Um, don't forget our next contest is for the Women of Power Marvel Crate giveaway, which is going to happen on July 20th. So get it to us before then. Let us know what character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe that is male right now you would like to see as female and who you would cast for that role. Looking forward to everybody's um, hits on that. That's going to be a fun one. So thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Until next time, I'm Agent Stargate Pioneer. I'm Agent Haley. And I'm Agent Lauren. Bye. See you next time, true believers. Bye. Bye. Bye, Felicia. Thank you for listening. 
If you want to leave us feedback, go to gunnageek.com and you'll find all of our contact information in other shows. You can also visit legendsofshield.com where you'll find our complete archive of podcasts. The music heard on this podcast is by Kevin McLeod and can be found at incompetech.com. The opinions heard on this podcast are those of the individual host and do not represent Legends, Stream, or Gunna Geek. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is the property of the Disney Corporation. No infringement is intended.